Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here checking in on this Wednesday, June 24th, 2020, about 4.35 p.m. West Coast time out here in California where the earthquake activity is quite busy um, here along the West Coast. Did have a pretty good size earthquake out here in Southern California. Started off as a 6.0. Uh, that has since been downgraded to a 5.8 magnitude earthquake there, uh, according to the USGS. And of course, numerous, numerous aftershocks following that uh, borderline 6.0 earthquake. Going to cover the details in that in just a minute, but we've definitely had an uptick in uh, Pacific Plate earthquakes following that 5.8 there in Southern California. Uh, borderline 6 over here just south of Japan, just right along that subduction zone, also 4.5 short time ago. Some further activity down south as well, so major movement along the entire Pacific Plate. Uh, over here on this section, not so much, but definitely making up for it along the west coast here. Uh, I do want to show you uh, a picture real quick of a rock slide, that's pretty big, a little bit too big there, in um, Mount Whitney area. Go ahead and zoom that down a little bit. Now Mount Whitney sits about 12 miles to the west of this epicenter area there in Southern California, California near Lone Pine where that 5.8 earthquake struck. Uh, looks like they did evacuate the park uh, and this once again near Mount Whitney. It's called the Whitney Portal west of Lone Pine. Again, about 12 miles to the west. Uh, they closed the area and it looks like they also evacuated the campgrounds and said that they were not aware of any injuries um, at the moment. So, pretty scary image there. Uh, you know, I'd hate to be up there rock climbing or uh, on, a, on a hike there and uh, feel, a, feel the ground move uh, dramatically below my feet like that. It'd be pretty, uh, pretty unreal. Uh, taking a look at the, uh, wow, that kind of shrunk there a little bit. Go ahead and zoom this in real quick here. There we go. Taking a look at the area of interest here, uh, just south of Lone Pine, shows us a pretty good size swarm going on. But of course, um, aftershock activity is going to continue following this large quake there, just south of Lone Pine in Southern California. Uh, on this map here, we're seeing 118 earthquakes today of all magnitudes from the USGS of course the 5.8 go ahead and go down here to the bottom bottom and we'll highlight that specific quake there was some activity prior to the 5.8 over the past couple days including today as well just some smaller quakes but then boom we see that 5.8 right there in that blue circle west of that lake but still within uh, let's see here. We got the Owens Valley Fault System right here. We're going to get to a little bit of information on that here in a second. Uh, you can see Owens Valley Fault right within this vicinity. This area is north of the Ridgecrest area from the uh, July 4th, July 5th quakes that happened last year down in Ridgecrest. That area uh, is south of this new activity. The Owens Valley earthquake uh, back in 1872 was within this area here and that earthquake uh, produced a significant uh, magnitude quake there a lot larger than this 6.0 there uh, they're estimating between 7.4 and 7.9 on the Richter scale back then so this area no doubt very capable of producing a large quake right now just a 5.8 but uh, like I said, there's been a, quite a bit of pressure out here along the West Coast, no doubt. Uh, as far as major aftershocks going, uh, following that 5.8, we're not seeing anything major, but there's definitely percentages out there of possibility of seeing a larger quake. Uh, they're low, but they're not, you know, they're, they're still there. As low as they are, just like uh, you kind of have to remember back July 4th, July 5th right there. I can't remember what the first magnitude was back there in Ridgecrest, but uh, it, the second earthquake on the following day was much larger uh, than the prior day on the on that first somewhat large earthquake back then in Ridgecrest. So it's a it's a possibility. 
I've seen something larger, folks. I think it's below 10%, but uh, it's there. Um, and of course, seeing something around the four to five range is uh, definitely a good possibility. Much, much higher percentage. Uh, it's an area to watch for sure. Looking down here to the Ridge Crest, Ridge Crest area, which sits about uh, about 40 miles or so, 50 miles or so uh, from that activity to the north. You can see it's kind of dwindling down a little bit, but not uh, not completely. An area to watch, though, folks, for the most part out here is the infamous San Andreas Fault System out here, right? I think everyone has heard about it. That's going to be this dark line here, the plate boundary between the North American and the Pacific Plate, a major stress buildup area. This southern section portion of the San Andreas Fault has not seen a major earthquake in quite some time. I do have a couple... Uh, images here that I kind of want to share and see if we can <clears throat> get a little bit of information out here to you. Now, of course, it's going to be going to give me some issues there, like it always does. But I, I kind of want to show you guys the plate boundary and motion here. This here's the West Coast. We got California and Nevada there in view. This is just the main uh, motion, if you will, between the North American and the Pacific Plate. Each other, uh, or I should say, every other independent fault system out there may move not necessarily the same way. It could be uh, left to right, right to left, north to south, you know it. But this here is the main general motion of the plates out here. You can see the North American plate kind of scooting towards the southeast, while we got the Pacific plate, which includes Los Angeles. Uh, moving off to the northwest and you get the grinding and you get the stress build up between the two okay so we've seen earthquake large earthquakes in the central section of the San Andreas fault and also the northern section what we haven't seen is a major earthquake stress reliever in the south part in quite some time let me bring up this here real quick this little article and everything's just blown out of proportion here. I had it all set up, but you know what? Things just kind of go crazy. Uh, this is a little article here you can find find out there on the internet. Uh, talks a little bit about the big one, the next big one. And uh, this article was way back in 2006, right? Quite a while ago. Um, this was a little article, and I'll, I'll read some. It mentions that the San Andreas Fault has reached a sufficient stress level for an earthquake of magnitude greater than 7.0 7.0 on the moment magnitude scale to occur. Um, it looks like the study has also found that the risk of a large earthquake may be increasingly more rapidly than scientists had previously believed. Of course, scientists don't know it all. They think they do, but they just don't. Um, let's see. Moreover, the risk is currently concentrated on the southern section of the fault the region around Los Angeles because massive earthquakes have occurred relatively recently on the central and the northern section like I just mentioned 1857 back in the central and of course the 1906 San Francisco northern uh, northern section there uh, two good sized earthquakes major stress relievers there uh, while the southern section has not seen any similar rupture for at least 300 years uh, according to this study, a massive earthquake on the southern section of the San Andreas Fault would result in major damage to the Sp Palm Springs, Indio uh, metropolitan area and other cities in San Bernardino, Riverside, and Imperial Counties in California. Uh, of course, that would include Los, Los Angeles and other areas down there. Uh, the information available suggests that the fault is ready for the next big earthquake, but exactly when the triggering will happen uh, and when the earthquake will occur, we cannot tell. It could be tomorrow, it could be 10 years from now. Again, this was published 10, back in 2006. Uh, the way I see it, folks, that there's so much going on um, globally and on the North American plate and the Pacific plate and everywhere in between, without any movement on the southern section of the fall, we're getting very close to seeing something major, I believe, folks out there in Southern California. Yes, those were pretty large quakes, uh, July 4th and July 5th, but they were not 
on the plate boundary, which is the San Andreas fault system. Unless that, unless that specific section out there is completely fused together, which I highly doubt, because it's only a small little land area. I believe we're going to see something really soon, folks. Not a prediction, but it's definitely looking. It's got to. It's got to happen. It definitely has to happen. Uh, let's see here. And they mentioned about the Cascadia subduction zone uh, um, connection and whatnot. But you can check out this article. Uh, they have it on Wikipedia and some other areas out there along the uh, in the internet. So check it out. Boy, this thing is just being weird right now. Not for sure what's going on. Anyway, a little bit of information about that southern uh, section right there. Kind of tells you the areas that it goes through uh, near the Salton Sea area and whatnot. Um, let's bring this one over here real quick. I think this is another article here, and this one's blown out too. I don't. I honestly don't know what's going on here. But we'll get it to work. We will get it to work here, folks. And this is the one I think I just showed you guys, I believe, here. Let's see here. Pretty much the same information there. Yes, I believe that's right. So. I just think it's important, folks, with all this rocking and rolling going on right now. Uh, everywhere in well around the southern section here that uh, it's it's best to be prepared folks if you don't have some type of emergency plan after all this virus stuff then I don't know what to tell you because uh, it's gonna be pretty crazy zooming in down here folks to the uh, southern section show you guys specifically here as mentioned kind of down here near the salt and sea region indio desert hot springs this area right here um, that's highlighted that's the plate boundary the southern section of the uh, san andreas fault there no activity at the moment none zero maybe some microquakes to the east and to the west there but uh it's stuck man it's been stuck for what over 300 years just think of how many earthquakes have taken place around this area over the over 300 years. Think of how many earthquakes have taken place on a large scale globally over the last 300 years without any major quakes on this on this section right here. No, no stress relief, stress buildup. 300 years of it. Uh, this thing has got to be ready to explode. I am not joking. Hopefully, uh, like I say, hope it. Hope everyone is prepared for something major. In the process, also, folks, of updating this system here. Uh, shooting out here in 1080 HD, but um, looking at potentially getting something that will stream here in 4K. Uh, much better, faster quality. I mean, it's good right now, but, you know, it's... Uh, I figure, why not? Get something that's top of the line. Uh, something that's going to bring maximum uh, quality to the viewers and to the channel out here. So, working on that. Coming soon. Latest earthquake. Looks like a 2.8 out there. That's kind of a... Uh, right there, smack dab in Nevada. Let me bring up that earthquake map once again. Let's see if I can see where that's at. And how all this will affect the Cascadia subduction zone, you know, it's it's hard to say, folks. It really is. Here's that 2.8, kind of out there in a weird area, well north of the uh, of the swarming that's going on northwest of Tonopah. I can say that I still believe there's a tremendous amount of uh, stress being applied out here along the west coast and the and the uh, I tell you what the San Andreas she's just not 
she's holding on right she's holding on so tight but eventually even the strongest man even the strongest rock plate boundary out here <laughs> rocks plate boundary out here um, it's got to give sometime it's got to give so anyway folks um I'm keeping an eye on things I'm just gonna see see how this plays out like I say there's a lot of movement out here along the Pacific plate globally not so much uh, far as away from the Pacific plate goes a little bit of activity there in South America but uh, not not a whole lot and not a whole lot of aftershock activity there in southern Mexico following those quakes they had uh, well yesterday but you can kind of see the activity working its way to the north over the uh, past 48 hours or so this is about 48 hours of earthquake activity um, I don't believe we're done I don't believe this activity is just gonna um, hop and skip away you know somewhere else uh, I believe the west coast is still looking potentially like I mentioned uh, for some larger activity so stay safe everyone please have an earthquake plan make sure you got plenty of water all that good stuff right toilet paper apparently um, you know hand sanitizer I don't know if you need hand san sanitizer uh, but uh, just best to be on guard out here folks so Anyway, I'm going to jump off here. I'll be monitoring live stream here for a little bit. So we'll chat you guys a little bit later.